What is going on Leafs Nation? And before I do anything, I'm just gonna put my mic down here. Finally! Let's go! Yeah! Let's freaking go! We look good, we're good for the camera. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Toronto Maple Leafs have finally broken the 19 year long curse of winning a playoff series. We're not gonna talk about the big one that's spanning to about 56 years now, but we'll ignore that one for now. And after being on this earth for 18 years, I'm a full grown adult for crying out loud. They finally, finally win a playoff series. And against who else but the Tampa Bay Lightning, the three time Eastern Conference champions and the two time Stanley Cup champions back to back may i add and so before i go any further i just want to say tampa bay what a team like i i really don't know how to properly say this but the tampa bay lightning are monsters throughout the series ask anybody who watched it tampa bay played better the tampa bay lightning outplayed the leafs through i would say a majority of that series and i don't think that anybody can argue that if you watch the games tampa's got the experience tampa's got the grit the intensity they have everything that in a different universe they probably win this series and so before i go any further i just wanted to say thank you so much to the tampa bay lightning their fans and everybody for just giving us the opportunity to play against you guys it's not going to be the last time we played you guys you guys bested us last year we got you guys this year and here is to many more battles to come between the bolts and the leaves and so with that out of the way i i can't even tell you the state of euphoria i was in on saturday night it was just the perfect storm the perfect storm of events that had you just so excited in the moment as well as just so nervous because Leafs Nation will tell you we have been in that situation before. But before I go over the sixth and closing game of this series, I just wanted to go over a general just synopsis of the entire series, go over each game from games one to six, and basically give my take on each game and how I guess the feeling was coming out of each game. And so without further ado, let's begin with game one, which the Tampa Bay Lightning won to a score of seven to three. The playoffs, the energy, Everything surrounding it in Toronto is this finally the year that the Leafs break through. Everything surrounding that game, the buzz, the intensity, the is this finally the year for the Leafs is immediately all put to rest when the Tampa Bay Lightning take a 3-0 lead in game one. The first period, might I add, the Leafs were booed off of the ice for crying out loud. And so at that point, we're talking about the reaction coming out of the first period of game one. At that point, there were some Leaf fans who were ready to pack and run. Do not go on Leafs Twitter at times like that. I, I, I please, I beg you, do not do that to yourself because it, it is damaging to your mental health. But it's not to say that the reaction was not somewhat valid. I mean, the Leafs load up at the deadline. O'Reilly, McCabe, Achari. They get these big guys to come in. Playoff experience guys, might I add, such in O'Reilly's case. And to just come out so flat against a team like the Tampa Bay Lightning, mind you they're the Tampa Bay Lightning, but the Tampa Bay Lightning had practically stumbled their way into the playoffs and have such a strong performance, it's almost like the Leafs took them a little too lightly. And so we all know how this game ends. The Leafs battle back, get within a goal of tying before the Tampa Bay Lightning immediately put that out. There's the Michael Bunting hit that happened, which suspends him for three games. It puts the Leafs on a five on three after Keefe challenges for goalie interference. I still don't even fully know what he challenged for. But regardless, I believe Tampa was up like 5-2 after that period. And so heading into the third period of game one, Joseph Wall goes in. At this point, the game is over. And just as the clock winds down, it is just shock. It is disgust. It is just a surprise. And in the worst way possible for all of Leafs Nation, where really, we waited that long. We waited all year, all offseason, for them to come out flat in game one against the Tampa Bay Lightning. And this is not to say that anybody thought that it was gonna be easy. I said before the series, I thought that the Leafs were gonna win in five, but to expect them to come out as flat as they did, that's just, I it's, it's only the Leafs that can do something like that. As we all know, Ilya Samsonov didn't have the greatest of games throughout the series. And I would even say specifically in this game, he looked very shaky coming out of his net a lot. 
Um, just a lot of really bad rebounds as well is another thing that I noticed with Samsonov, especially in game one. That kind of toned down as the series went on, but it was still prevalent as late as game six where he was giving away rebounds that were bad. He seemed to be coming out of his net. He wasn't really honed to his edges as well. But so the general feeling coming out of game one is just like I said, complete shock. Just complete, how did this happen? How did the Leafs fall so flat on their face after game one? And I was trying to preach to Leafs Nation, patience, be calm. It is one game. The first game of the series does not define what's going to be the end of it. So please stay calm, stay collected, short term memory. Let's move on to game two. And so as we move into game two, just what a response. I mean, that is the only thing I could say. Something that the Leafs have been known for this year is after bad losses or after losses in general, they come out with a response. The Leafs just came out firing. They came out with a vengeance. They came out with just the passion that Leafs Nation had been looking for. Morgan Riley scores within a minute and the Leafs clobber the Tampa Bay Lightning 7-2. And so really in that regard, there's not much to say about this game. The Leafs just kind of had it. I will say though about that game that there was maybe a 10 minute period in the second period where Tampa seemed to be kind of getting back into it. But regardless, the Leafs just seemed to steamroll them. I mean, it was 7-2 by the end of this one. It was just what we wanted, what we wanted to see in game one for crying out loud. And so as the seconds wind down in that one, the Leafs win it 7-3, incredible. Just like I said, what a response by the team. And now the series shifts to Tampa. And as the series shifts locations from Toronto to Tampa, in my mind, I'm thinking, Tampa kind of got an advantage here. I mean, if you think about what the goal is for a road team in the playoffs, it's okay, we would love to win both games, but if we're starting out on the road, if we can take one of them, if we can steal one game on the road, we have an advantage now at home where we can take both games on our home ice. Throughout the third game in that series, Tampa just dominated. Like I, I, I cannot express this enough that the Tampa Bay Lightning just dominated the Leafs. They kicked them up and down the ice. It did not matter. Even though the Leafs had scored in the early goings of that game to make it one nothing, Tampa Bay had all of the possession. They had all the shots, they had everything. But the main thing about it is that the Leafs, unlike other iterations of this team, were defending like incredibly well. And so even after Tampa Bay takes a 3-2 lead after the Darren Radge goal, the Leafs just continue to not be able to put on pressure offensively while Tampa begins to pummel them in their own zone. I mean, to the outside viewer, this game could have gotten out of hand. Ilya Samsonov, throughout this series, after a brutal game one, just incredible within his own net. He, to me, is going to go down as the underrated series MVP because I think a lot of people are giving it to Riley or maybe even Matthews. Ilya Samsonov is the guy. Save after save after save. I mean, they're all highlight reels, keeping the Leafs in this one until the final minute where Ryan O'Reilly puts it past Andre Vasilevsky and the Leafs, probably undeservingly of their play at least, are going to overtime. And in overtime, it does not matter how you played on your last shift. It does not matter how the game is going. All it takes is one shot and your team wins the game. And so what happens in that overtime? Tampa Bay continuing to put on pressure, continuing. The Leafs get a couple of chances, but in the final minute, Morgan Riley puts up a shot from the blue line that beats Andre Vasilevsky, and the Leafs somehow, some way, improbably, impossibly, win game three in Tampa. It just, it, it's still crazy to me that they were able to pull that out. And that's not even the craziest one that they won in Tampa. And so just coming out of that, the excitement from Leafs Nation, just the, the overall reaction of the hockey world of how did the Leafs do this? I mean, Tampa's feeding them their lunch for all we care. How did the Leafs pull that off? And what I will bring your attention to is a conversation I had with my father over WhatsApp in which he said they haven't competed, but they've wanted it more. Then he goes on to say, this series shows you don't have to be the better team. You need to want it more. And man, did the Leafs want it. Going into game four, Tampa once again 
piling on the pressure, kicking the Leafs up and down the ice. They are playing the game at their pace. Taking a 4-1 lead into the third period with 10 minutes left, Tampa has all but assured that this series is going to be tied at 2-2 headed back to Toronto. But what happens? The Leafs show that they want it more, that this year is going to be different from the rest. And what happens next is stuff out of a literal fairy tale. After all the criticism that Austin Matthews takes for not showing up in the playoffs, not being a playoff performer, and being a key component in why the Leafs choke in the playoffs, my God, does he show up in game four and in a huge way. Austin Matthews buries one to make it 4-2, and then he buries another on the power play to put them within one. And the icing on the cake is Morgan Riley tying it with less than four minutes to play in the game. Four minutes from it being a 2-2 series. Now that is not guaranteed in any sense of the word. Money Puck will tell you, and I'll put up the graph, the Leafs were down to a 1.4. 1.4 chance of winning this game, and they pull it out in overtime at 4:14. Alex Kerfoot who has taken a lot of flack from Leafs Nation, has been part of trade rumors seemingly ever since he got to the Leafs, puts in the biggest goal potentially of his career, his first of the playoffs, and the biggest goal of the series so far as the Leafs take a 3-1 chokehold on this series. And although Leafs Nation is celebrating their happy one more win to euphoria, to a feeling that some of us have never experienced before, the doubt begins to set in. And why does doubt set in when your team is up 3-1 in a series? You took both games on the road? Because we had been here before. And I'll take you back to 2021 when they lost to the Montreal Canadiens after being up 3-1 in the series. And that series basically just broke the brains of every Leaf fan ever. It just, how did they manage to do that? And can they do that again against a stronger opponent in the Tampa Bay Lightning for crying out loud? If there's any team that can do it in these playoffs, it's the freaking Lightning. A team that has gone through adversity after adversity, multiple game sevens, Stanley Cup clinching goals, and Stanley Cup finals losses. If there's any team that can do it, it's the Tampa Bay Lightning. And that is where the doubt came from from Leaf fans in this series. But vibes are cool. Going into game five, we're at home, have a chance to extinguish the demons on home ice. But it just wasn't meant to be, unfortunately. It started out pretty well, though. Morgan Riley scored seemingly quick, putting the Leafs up 1-0 before I believe it was Anthony Sorelli who tied the game like less than 10 seconds later. And from there, going into the third period, the Tampa Bay Lightning had a 3-1 series lead. But in the final few minutes of that game, Matthews puts one by. The Leafs have a chance. Are the comeback kids back at it again? No, not in this one. The game was iced and it is now 3-2, headed back to Tampa Bay. And so if you thought Leaf fans were nervous heading into this game, I cannot even tell you the reaction of Leafs Twitter, which please stay off of it, it is bad for your mental health. A lot of people, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people thought that the Leafs were going to blow this series again simply because of the fact that it had been done before. I mean, the Leafs had all the advantage in the world to close up the series at home, and now they got to go back to Tampa Bay. Tampa's home ice, the best home team in the NHL, but a little trick that the Leafs had up their pocket was the fact that Michael Bunting was going to come back and that they were undefeated in Tampa. But for all of that, for all the things that were going the Leafs way, as well as the Lightning, all of that, all the stats, all the assists, all the goals, all of everything that had happened to that point in the series just doesn't matter once that puck drops. Because once that puck dropped, Tampa Bay once again right back to their game. They're kicking the Leafs up and down the ice. But I was saying throughout that game, they're defending well. They're going to win this game the way that they won game four and the way that they won game three. They take their chances and they defend hard. They get the saves, they do that, and they're going to win this game. And look what happened. Tampa, throughout the first period, kicking the Leafs up and down the ice. Bunting got a couple of chances. 
God bless his soul, what a game for Michael Bunting in game six. Although I don't believe he got on the score sheet, if you watch that game, Bunting had a step throughout it. And so the first period of game six ends 0-0, making it the first period in the series to not feature a goal. That is how privileged we were to watch this series, that we waited till game six, the first period of game six, three, six, nine, 12, 15, we went 15 straight periods of having goals in them. That is wild, that is absurd. But so going into the second period, Tampa Bay once again piling on the pressure, once again doing what they do best of just putting shots on net. Put a shot on net and it might find its way in. That's what happened with the Leafs in this case. I can remember the goal clearly. Clearly as the one that won them the series. Where TJ Brody, who I didn't think was having the greatest game six, keeps the puck in at the blue line, hands it over to Austin Matthews, and he roofs it. And the Leafs, heading into the third period, are up 1-0. They're up 1-0 on the Tampa Bay Lightning with a chance to close out the series in six. And yet... The Leafs have also been here before as early as last year. They had a lead in game six and they lost that. And what happened in this one? They also lost that lead. The Tampa Bay Lightning tie it. I believe it was Steven Stamkos like five minutes into the overtime. And just like that, we are headed to OT once again. Heading into overtime, any other iteration of this Leafs team, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, and even 2022, as we had previously seen, loses that game. And we are looking at a game seven on Monday at the time that I am recording this. And the period opens up with Tampa putting on chances, the Leafs going back the other way and putting on chances. But once again, Tampa Bay establishing dominance. But as my father had previously said, you don't have to be the best team to win the series. You have to want it more. And by God, did the Leafs want it more. John Tavares goes for a skate around the net and look what happens. He puts one on net. It hits off the skate of Darren Radish, who a lot of people are throwing flack at. That's not really his fault. And the Leafs win. They win. They, they actually won a elimination style game. They actually won a series clinching game. They did it. And they advance to the second round where now they play the Florida Panthers. What just a last 48 what is it, 124 hours for, for Leaf fans. It's just, it's so incredible that I finally, like the year that I finally become an adult, like it's like this, this drought like matures and it's like, okay, it's had its course. It's time for a new chapter in Leafs hockey, void of choking in the first round at the very least. And so once again, hats off to the Tampa Bay Lightning. What an effort, what a series, just, I cannot wait to play you guys again because it's pretty likely that we're going to play you guys again at some point in the playoffs, if not the regular season. So Tampa Bay Lightning fans, I do not think you have anything to be discouraged about. The salary cap is a thing. I don't really know Tampa's entire free agency situation, but they're going to be back next year. And I would even argue they're probably going to be back with a vengeance. After the 2017 loss, I don't think any Leaf fan could have been disappointed. It was a new core. They made the playoffs by like one point, at least one win, and they pushed the reigning President's Trophy winners to six games. That in and of itself is an accomplishment for a young and inexperienced Leaf team. 2018 was where the disappointment set in. They battled back from a 3-1 deficit in the series against the Boston Bruins, and they could not close it out in game seven ever having a lead going into the third period. Where have I heard that one before? 2019 is where just hello darkness mild friend begins to set in where the Leafs had an opportunity to close out the series at home in six games versus Boston and they couldn't do it. And they head back to Boston for game seven and they lay an egg. 2020 in the qualifying round, they lose to the Columbus Blue Jackets of all teams. They don't even make it to the round of 16 playoffs. And then 2021, as I've referenced throughout this video, is the year, the season that just broke the minds of all Leaf fans. And just, I, I can't do justice, just how awful it was experiencing that from the other side. Perhaps fans, they were over the moon. We knew how that went, but we were once again in a pit of despair, probably the biggest one I've ever been as a Leaf fan. And so heading into the 2022 season, 
let's get that monkey off our back. Let's do this. And we match up against the Tampa Bay Lightning. Had an opportunity to close the series out in Tampa. And we couldn't do that there. We went to overtime similar to this year. Like I said, couldn't close it out in Tampa. Go back home. We play a great game. But it's Nick Paul's who goals who lift Tampa over the top. Beat the Leafs in a game seven once again. The Leafs lose in, at that point, seven straight Game seven, or I guess elimination, do or die games, and set a record, I'm pretty sure, in the sports world. But we're after that series, a lot of Leaf fans kind of threw up their hands. They're never going to win. I chose to take a different approach. I said that I seen that series as a new beginning for this core. I said that the way that they played in that series, the way that they competed, the way that they showed up in those big moments, and they just they couldn't get it done. If they can get one more bounce, maybe it goes our way. I believed that that right there was a new beginning for this core and that next year or I guess this year now was going to be a good one and some fans took my message some really didn't didn't really see where I was coming from because we had been in this situation before and now here we are I said that the Leafs were going to win in five against the Tampa Bay Lightning I'll take six they still win the series and for everybody saying oh it's the second round you guys are getting so happy like you just won the Stanley Cup I'm for crying out loud, I'm a full-grown adult. I've never seen my favorite hockey team, my favorite sports team in general, advance. And they finally do it. Please just let us have our moment. And so with that, and with the second round on the horizon, thank you so much to Leafs Nation for continuing to stick with this team through the good and the really freaking bad. Once again, a 2021 reference, and I cannot wait to see where they go from here. So that'll be it for this one. Follow the Instagram, it's Buzzin' Hockey. Y'all already know what it is. Thank you so much once again. Go Leafs go, and best of luck to us in round two, and hopefully beyond.